All right, so we left off here. So now we're gonna continue to expand this. We expanded the equity section, right? Now we're gonna expand assets and liabilities. And that's really gonna depend on the company. Depends on the company, right? Because each company has different assets. One company might um, have delivery vehicles as one of their assets. Another might lease that delivery vehicle. So it'd be an expense. So each company's specific assets and liabilities are really going to depend on that company and their operations, whereas the equity section is pretty standard. Sure, the individual expenses might be different, the individual revenue, but they're still going to have some sort of revenue, some sort of expense, dividends, common stock, okay? So the easiest way to do this will be to look at an example, okay? So let's say that we're going to open up our very own business. It's our first business. We're just a young little whippersnapper and we decide to start a lemonade stand. Okay, so there's our basic accounting equation. Let's expand first the equity section. We said we're gonna have our owner investment. And right now I'm, I'm not quite going to that corporate terminology just yet. We're gonna have our dividends or our drawings or our withdrawals, whatever you wanna call that. Drawings, revenue, and expenses. We'll just start simple. Okay, let's give ourselves some reasonable assets. And again, if you want a refresher of what assets are, go back to chapter two, either skim the chapter or watch some of those lecture videos. So cash, AR, let's say maybe equipment, we do supplies, and maybe equipment as well. Lots of assets. Liabilities, let's have accounts payable for now. We can add more if we want. All right, so let's say the first thing we do is we crack open our piggy bank and we, well, I'm not gonna try to draw a piggy bank cause that's, mm, mm, that's not gonna be good. Little, little, little legs. All right, so we crack open our piggy bank and we take out all the money and we put that in a little cash box and our lemonade stand so that we can make change for customers. So let's say we crack it open and we have $25. Okay, so we put $25 into our business, and now we are analyzing transactions. We're using the accounting equation to analyze our transactions. Okay, so here's the first transaction. We take 25 of our hard-earned dollars and we put it into our business. So our lemonade stand gets $25 deposit. Now this equation, just like any equation, says that both sides have to have the same value. You can think of it as one of those old fashioned scales where both sides have to weigh the exact same amount in order to be in balance, right? So right now we are definitely not in balance. We have $25 weighing down the scale and nothing on the other side, 25 to zero. Now remember we said in a previous definition, that all of the company's assets have a claim against them, either by an external creditor or by the owner. So in this case, that's our money. That was our investment into our company. So we have a claim on that cash. And now both sides of our equation are balanced. Hooray. Okay, so for each time there's any type of transaction, we're gonna analyze it and see the effects on the accounting equation. In chapter three, you read about something called double entry accounting. Okay, it was in topic 2.1. It basically says that for each transaction, for each transaction, at least two accounts have to be impacted. Two accounts must be impacted. And that kind of makes sense because if this is all an equation, we're trying to keep it in balance. 
we know from our little scale here that if we didn't have at least two accounts involved, we couldn't balance, right? All right, so just something to keep in mind. That's why we're gonna have always at least two items impacted. All right, so let's look at another entry. Let's say we go to our mom and we say, hey, can we borrow your fancy glass pitcher and some cups, glass cups to serve our lemonade in? And she says, sure, sure, here you go. And now let's, you know, uh, just for simplicity, let's not even put it in dollar signs. Let's just say all of a sudden we get a supply, we get a glass pitcher and some cups, okay? So supplies in the business went up, but something else had to be impacted too, right? This, is, this picture is not ours. It's owed to someone outside of our little lemonade stand. It's owed to our mother. So we can just make up another type of payable accounts, right? Payable is just something that is owed. So we can even just call it picture payable, okay? So we owe one picture and a set of glass glasses. Okay, so we have a pitcher on one side and maybe five glasses. It's the same value on both sides. I know I went a little off cuff there, not putting it in a dollar amount that violates the monetary measurement principle for heaven's sakes, right? But just so you can see the, the double entry happening in the impact on the accounting equation. All right, let's say we get our, well, first we need to have some more supplies. So we ask our mother to take us to the grocery store and we get some lemons, right? Get some sugar. Okay. And let's say all that, the lemons and the sugar, all that costs us, say $6. Okay, so we have $6 worth of supplies. Supplies are an asset. Now we went to the grocery store and we paid with our lemonade stands cash. So now here we have all the activity happening on one side of the equation. That's fine because it zeroes out. And we just said both values have to be the same. Okay, so that's totally fine. All right, let's say we make our lemonade. We make our first sale. We have a customer come, they pay us $2 for our cup of delicious lemonade. So plus $2 cash, and that is gonna be revenue going up. Okay, so just so you can get some idea of the back and forth. I know it's a very simplistic example. So we will look at a more realistic example in the next video.